Lonnie Johnson is a truly creative soul who possesses a multitude of talents. This Miami native is a loving mother, a tireless community advocate, a dedicated teacher, and a gifted artist. I had the pleasure of speaking to Miss Johnson about what inspires her incredible works of art, what fuels her passion for mentoring the next generation of change makers, and what drives her commitment to be an advocate for social justice. Woof. Art today, I mean, art has always been important, especially for black folks, especially the people of color, because the society may not listen to us any other day, any other time. But when we are making art, when we are um, using the visual language, I feel like that's power. Visual, again, visual language is such a powerful tool. And I think sometimes as artists, we forget how much power we have. And I think that it's so important to seize these moments to say something and use our craft to, to create some sort of dialogue or to, to, to present questions and confront what is happening in our world. I don't think we have time for art for art's sake. I don't think me as a black woman, I don't have the luxury to just make art for art's sake because it's, it's beyond that for me. I have to use it to say something. I have to use it to bring about change. I have to use it to create space for folks that look like me. What inspires me, I think that being a black woman in Miami, being a black woman in America, um, being a mother inspires me, being a, an activist, being an advocate in my community, showing up for young people, all of those things inform and inspire me to create. Um, I think that even down to like, you know, all of this stuff that I wear and, you know, that's a part of who I am and it inspires me to kind of incorporate that into my work. Um, thinking about legacy and what I leave behind for my children and all of the young people that I've um, worked with or influenced in some way, like that excites me, that influences and inspires my work. My advice to young artists is be yourself, be your authentic self and be it unapologetically. Um, tell your story, tell your truth. Nobody else can tell it for you. Um, and that's, that's what I would say because especially brown and black folks, like there's so many folks that want to tell our stories for us, but we have to, we got to seize these moments to tell it for ourselves. Um, and I, that's the first thing I would tell That's what, well, that's what I tell young people that I work with is just tell your truth, show up every time, put in the work and, and tell it honestly, full heartedly, you know what I'm saying? And not, not about what someone else may think it is or what you think someone wants it to be. What is it for you? And what, how do you want to tell it? And how many different ways can you tell it? You know what I mean? Like there, your voice is not a monolith. Who you are is not a monolith. So there's so many ways that you can convey this narrative and to, to present it out into the world. So do that. PAM Teen Council, it provides access. And for me, accessibility to art is hella important. Folks need to have access to art. And programs like these help young people have access to it. So it, it changes how they see the world because they're seeing a different part of our world and art is the visual language is such a powerful language and we are fed to believe that not everybody has access to it and i think that these types of programs starts to to dismantle that idea early by giving young people the access to it i think it's important as a teaching artist as a youth advocate for me to show up for young people the way that I needed somebody to show up for me. Um, that's like one of my like mantras. Like I need to be the, the, the grown person that I needed when I was 15, 16 
for y'all now. So it's it's about showing up for me. It's about, you know, again, accessibility. I feel like me as an artist, me as an educator, me as an, an activist, it is my job to kind of kind of hold the door open for you all. You know what I mean? And not so much about telling you and you know, talking at you, but allowing you the space to talk about, um, to exist, to just be. So my focus with Remnants was to create a space for black girls, black women to feel seen, to have a space for myself and for them to feel like they can claim all of their space and have this place where they can reflect and um, think about legacy and what that means. I think that people walked away with a better sense of themselves. Um, I think that especially with the times that we're in right now, it's something very beautiful about folks being able to gather and share stories, right? And even though there were people that I've known for a long time that came to participate in these workshops, like I felt like after we did the workshop together, like I felt closer to them because there was a lot of stories that were being shared. And, you know, art has a way of making people very vulnerable. So it's like, you know, folks are using their hands and making things, but they're also freeing themselves to kind of share things that they normally wouldn't share with someone because they're kind of busy in their hands, right? I know that I want to continue to do those workshops because I feel like it's such a great way to build community and to connect stories to kind of fuel back into my work, but more so about the community building and bringing people together, right? Well, what's interesting about Miami's art scene is that it's so young. It's still up and coming. So there is, what I love is that there's an opportunity for us to create what it's going to be. You know what I mean? Like we, we have more freedom. See, art scenes like in New York and in Chicago, they're already this weld oil machine, like this well built machine that has been working for years and years and years. But Miami, it's still kind of building itself. And it's kind of exciting because we we can kind of decide. And I've been lucky enough to kind of figure out how I maneuver into this thing and how it look, what it looks like for me, more so than if I was to go somewhere else. Um, and it's home, like this is home for me. Born and raised here. So I feel like I have an obligation um, to correct and kind of dismantle all of the things that make me angry about being here in Miami. Like it's a part of my responsibility to kind of correct and make those things right.